Hey everyone, just a quick preface on the video you're about to watch. This is an older one. I shot this two years ago, uh, June of 2019. It's a walk around, a little tour of the lumber operation at my old property. Uh, I never got around to editing it, but uh, I figured this would be a good time to put it out because the next couple of videos are going to document the, uh, the moving of that whole operation. So this is kind of a fun way to see what the, 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 the slab yard looked like or what was in it two years ago. Some of the things that are going to be in this video that are still that are stacked there right now will be still stacked there when I move them. So kind of a, a fun little, I don't know, walk down memory lane sort of thing. <laughs> so enjoy the video and I'll see you this weekend. Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my slab yard. So I had a comment recently that uh, I've done so many slapping videos and I have so many logs back here that might be interesting to uh, kind of walk around, take a walk down memory lane and take a look and see what I have back here. And unfortunately for the life of me, I can't find that comment, so I'm sorry. I don't remember who said that, but today actually Lindsay was like, we should do a video, which is exactly what this person was describing. So here we are, we're gonna walk around and uh, this is gonna be like one of those best moments kind of sitcom episodes, except Every moment is the best moment. So I'm sitting on top of a couple of silver maple logs that I cut back in August. So that was what, 10 months ago or so. So these two logs came from one tree that my friend Brandon got me from a removal job that he was doing. The bigger one on the bottom was probably one of the more exciting slabbing adventures because it had like this big steel spike in it, as well as some copper and brass wire. So it's gonna make for some pretty interesting and unique slab. The smaller log on top had a lot of really interesting figure and colors and uh, much more manageable because they're not super big. So Lisa's been sitting out here drying for about 10 months now and I've kind of utilized this smaller log as a weight to help apply weight down to the bottom stack to help keep them flat. You'll see that as we kind of look at the rest of the yard as well. I try to use other logs as just dead weight to help keep bigger stuff from warping as it dries. Now the cool thing about silver maple is it dries a lot more quickly than some of the other species back here. So although this has only been out here for, uh, what, 10 months and it's all about two and a half inches thick, it's currently reading on the moisture meter at about 12%. So it's pretty much getting close to being as dry as it's gonna get out here. So pretty soon it can go in for a final drying to bring it down below 10% so it's ready for use. So over here I have a red oak log down there. That is a uh, four foot diameter and it's about uh, eight feet long. Cut that back in November. That one had some really cool kind of odd splits on like half a log and then the other half was totally fine and clear. Kind of a fun one. Those are pretty dense. So those slabs are currently sitting at about 30% moisture content and they've been out here for what about six months or so. So red oak takes uh, a lot longer to dry. The oaks take a lot longer to dry than something like silver maple which dries pretty quickly so those probably going to need about 18 months or so out here to get down to around 15 percent or so and uh, on top of there i have three slabs of pecan those came from my buddy phil all the way from mississippi he came up with several logs including a couple of pecan and uh, live oak log which i still have to saw but those are the remainders of that log which i cut back in november as well so both of these logs in the stack were cut at the same time so Phil has the other, what, seven slabs from that log. So he's got those. These ones are also pretty high density. Pecan's very dense and very heavy. It is crazy how much heavier this stuff is than the silver maple. This stuff I cannot even begin to move by myself. These are like paper. It's crazy. So that's another one that's gonna take a long time to dry. It's high density, takes a lot, long, a lot longer to dry. So let's, uh, let's, let's walk on back here. <laughs> Behind there I have these two ash logs. These are from a long time ago. So those are some of the first of the big logs that I picked up with my trailer. The ash log I'm standing on right now, I have a video about going and picking up and offloading into the driveway. And then the bigger one at the bottom there was one of the last large logs I pulled out of a big dump pile a few years ago. And they were, both these logs were sitting in the driveway as I was building the bandsaw mill. The smaller ash log that I'm standing on right here that was the second of the big logs that I put onto the sawmill after I had built it. And then the bigger one at the bottom there was number four. So these ones have been sitting out here. They've been cut for a little over two years now. I believe I cut the smaller one in March and then the bigger one got cut in May. So 
we're going on just over two years for these. So they're at equilibrium right now. They're as dry as they're going to get out here. So they can go in for final drying really at any time. So if you hop over to uh, this stack here, the big one at the bottom there, that is the red oak log that I sawed with my dad over Thanksgiving. So that's been out here for about six months or so now. That thing is 12 feet long and it's about four and change at the crotch and I think three feet down at the, at the butt down here. That was a lot of fun, hanging out with my dad, sawing some slabs over Thanksgiving weekend. That was, uh, that was fun, I really enjoyed that one. It's got a whole bunch of uh, kind of splits that had some dirt in them. So it's uh, kind of an interesting grain and color inside of there. Some really, really awesome and big slabs. Most of those bigger ones weigh, I think, 400 or 500 pounds a piece as they are wet. And obviously as they dry, they lose some weight. They are currently at, I think, 30%. So I'm just starting to be able to get readings with my moisture meter on those ones. So they again have a decent amount of time to go out here to drop some more moisture. On top is the, uh, the rotted out white oak log that I cut in August of last year. I just posted that video not too long ago. Those are also kind of at the same place. They're still up at the uh, like upper 20s, I think. So still quite a long time to go to be fully dried. That was a question I got on that video was because that log was, that tree was standing dead for so long and was kind of rotted out, was the wood actually like dried and ready to go when the tree fell? And no, it's, trees don't really dry standing up like that super well. So this thing is still fully saturated as if it was almost like a brand new tree, still holding a ton of moisture. I'm gonna hop over, maybe not. That could be a bad idea. I'm not as young as I used to be. So this guy right here, I picked this up in an alley in Robbinsdale, Minnesota. I have a video called uh, urban logging strategies where I went and picked up this thing that was uh, about two years ago to the date this stuff had a ton of figure in it some really big stuff here at the crotch it's five feet and then down here at the other end there it's about four feet so pretty big slabs should be some uh, pretty interesting stuff in there well we know it's interesting stuff in there because we cut the log and it was a fun one big slabs so with the silver maple here this is I think this is about 10 quarter or maybe a little bit thicker than that this probably took about 18 months to get to outdoor equilibrium versus the spalta stuff, which we looked at at the beginning, is obviously drying a lot faster than that. That spalta stuff was, you know, it's spalted, so it was kind of rotting at the time, so it has a much lower density than a healthy tree like this had. So that one's drying a lot faster than this, which is slightly more dense than that. But as it would, silver maple isn't super dense either, so it does dry pretty quickly on its own. So this is a uh, hard maple log that I cut in September of last year. So maybe what, nine months ago, something like that. This still has a pretty good amount of dry time left. Hard maple is a denser species, which takes longer to dry as opposed to silver maples or other things like that. So that one's not super big or anything, but uh, it's got some fun kind of figure and shape to it. I think that one is 11 feet long or so. Got a nice piece of uh, pressure treated two by 12 from the pressure treated pine tree. <laughs> right there. That's your favorite. That's a good one. That's the crown jewel. Look at that one. Look at that, look at the green in there. Yeah, look at that, huh? not bad. You got a little, we got a little knot action going there. Got a little swirly green kind of thing. You know, we flip it over. We got another side. Got another side. It's Whoa, got two sides. two sides. This one's got some power carving action going on there from somebody power carving on it at some point in their life. I don't know why. So that brings us around to the last log out here in the log yard or the slab yard. I guess this is the goofy maple. This one's got like 11 finishing, no, like uh, framing nails in it that we cut through when we're sawing that thing. It's got a lot of weird figure and interesting grain. This one was cut uh, about uh, two, two years and yeah, like 26 months ago or so. It's got uh, a lot of weird stuff going on. It's gonna make some good epoxy type stuff cause like it's all rotted out. But I do have a lot of these kind of smaller pieces that broke off that are highly figured. So I figured this whole log would end up being processed into like turning blanks and things like that anyway. And actually this is gonna be moving here pretty soon. 
because the log that is picked up, which is on the sawmill right now, which is four feet in diameter and 10 feet long, is going to go right here. So before I cut that guy up, I'm going to get these things out of here, get a new base set up right here so that it is all ready to go for a stack of logs. It's going to be like this. So that's the outdoor drying stacks, or basically where the big stuff goes to uh, dump some moisture before it goes into the drying room in the house to get brought down to indoor equilibrium, which we would consider fully dry. So let's go see what's cooking inside. So currently in the drying room, I have the slabs as well as the boards that I cut in my uh, how to turn a log into lumber series, the how to turn a log into boards and how to turn a log into slabs. So I have the walnut and cherry slabs up here on top and then the walnut and cherry boards on the bottom. So over here on your right, I have a couple of silver maple crotches. So up top was the first silver maple crotch that I cut when I first built my bandsaw mill. And the one on the bottom was the last of the large logs that I cut. These have been in here drying for about a month now. They're sitting at about 10%, so they'll probably be in here for uh, another two months to like uh, mid-July or late July. And then they should be down around 8.5% or so, because that's uh, July, August equilibrium here in the basement. So once they come out of the basement, they're ready to be sold. So I try and either have the buyers lined up beforehand so that as soon as they come out, they can go straight to the buyer shops that can be used right away. Or if they get sold right away, they come out of the shed. Now the best time to buy and use this stuff is right when it comes out of the basement because obviously when it comes out here, it's gonna start picking up moisture again because this is an unconditioned space. So this stuff, although it was sitting at about 6% over the winter when it was fully dried, is now coming back up and it's around 10% right now. So these are some white oak slabs. I got a smaller one here from the, uh, the outside of the log. And then the bigger ones are back here. I have, uh, what, three of these left, four of them left. So ugh, these are some big old white oak crotches. Really beautiful stuff. This was another one of those logs that I pulled out of the large log dump pile and it was sitting in my driveway while I was uh, building my bandsaw mill. So I have a couple of them, or a few of them here, I guess. So pretty big, they dried really nicely. They're very flat and they are ready to go find a new home. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this quick tour of my urban lumber yard. One of the uh, most common questions I get is what do I do with all the wood that I cut? And uh, yeah, I sell a lot of it. <laughs> so it really depends on like the time frame of when you're looking for stuff. But the best thing to do is if you see something I'm cutting that you really, really like, just let me know. I do take pre-orders and take a deposit for a slab you particularly like. So it'll be dried and ready for pickup and I'll let you know when that happens. So you don't have to really worry about watching and waiting for it to become available. That seems to be the best way to go for this kind of stuff. So hope you uh, enjoyed the, the slab stuff. This is the next one that's going to get cut and stacked for that uh, goofy maple is. And if you want to take a look at any of the videos for slabbing any of the logs we talked about today, I will leave a link to every single video down in the description. They will be in the order of appearance. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions about the urban log, slabbing yard, lumber yard thing, or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.